The menstrual cycle is a repeating process that prepares the body for a possible pregnancy and helps keep the reproductive system healthy. It happens in most people with ovaries and a uterus, usually beginning in puberty and continuing until menopause. Although the cycle is often talked about only in terms of a period, the period is just one part of a much larger series of events. Understanding what happens inside the body can make the process feel less mysterious and easier to follow. The cycle begins with the first day of menstrual bleeding. This is when the body releases the lining of the uterus, which has built up during the previous cycle. That lining, called the endometrium, is made of soft tissue and blood vessels. Its purpose is to create a comfortable place where a fertilized egg could attach and grow during pregnancy. When there is no pregnancy, the body no longer needs this lining. Hormone levels drop, especially estrogen and progesterone, which signals the uterus to shed its lining. This shedding flows out through the cervix and vagina. For many people, bleeding lasts between three and seven days, though this can vary widely. As the period ends, the body begins preparing for the next potential cycle of pregnancy. The brain releases chemical messengers called hormones from a structure known as the pituitary gland. One of these hormones, follicle, stimulating hormo, often shortened to FSH in, encourages the ovaries to begin developing several tiny sacs called follicles. Each follicle contains an immature egg. Most follicles will not continue to grow, but usually one becomes dominant and matures more quickly. As this follicle develops, it produces estrogen, a hormone that has several important roles. Estrogen helps the lining of the uterus grow thicker again after the period has ended. At the same time, it gradually prepares the body for ovulation, which is the release of an egg. The rising level of estrogen also signals to the brain that the follicle is nearly ready. When estrogen reaches a high enough point, the pituitary gland sends out a sudden surge of another hormone called luteinizing hormone, or LH. This surge is the trigger that causes ovulation to happen. Ovulation usually occurs around the middle of the cycle, but this timing can vary from person to person. During ovulation, the mature follicle opens and releases the egg into a structure called the fallopian tube. The egg begins to travel slowly through the tube toward the uterus. This journey is supported by gentle muscular movements of the tube and tiny hair, like structures called cilia that help guide the egg forward. The egg remains capable of being fertilized for only about 12 to 24 hours. If sperm are present in the reproductive tract during this time, the egg may be fertilized and pregnancy can begin. If no sperm meet the egg, the egg will eventually dissolve. After ovulation, the empty follicle transforms into a temporary structure called the corpus luteum. This structure produces progesterone, another hormone that plays a key role in preparing the uterus for a possible pregnancy. Progesterone causes the uterine lining to become thicker, softer, and richer in nutrients, making it more suitable for a developing embryo. It also helps keep the lining stable so it does not shed too soon. During this time, body temperature may rise slightly, and some people notice changes in energy levels, appetite, or mood. These changes vary widely and are influenced by the shifting hormones. If the egg is fertilized and implants in the uterine lining, the body begins to produce a new hormone known as HCG, which supports the corpus luteum and keeps progesterone levels high. This prevents the lining from shedding and allows pregnancy to continue. If fertilization does not occur, the corpus luteum slowly breaks down. As it fades, progesterone levels drop. This decrease in progesterone signals the uterus that pregnancy has not happened and the thickened lining is no longer needed. The lining begins to break apart, and the menstrual cycle starts again with the next period. Many people experience physical or emotional changes during different parts of the cycle. Before the period begins, some may notice what is commonly known as premenstrual symptoms. These can include bloating, breast tenderness, changes in mood, or mild cramping. These symptoms occur because hormone levels are falling, and the body is preparing to release the uterine lining. Mild discomfort is common, but severe pain or symptoms that interfere with daily life may signal a condition such as endometriosis or hormonal imbalance, and it is helpful to discuss these patterns with a health care professional. The length of the menstrual cycle can vary. 
A typical cycle lasts about 28 days, but anything from 21 to 35 days is often considered normal. Younger people who have recently begun menstruating and people approaching menopause may experience more irregular cycles because hormone patterns are still stabilizing or beginning to change. Stress, significant changes in weight, intense exercise, illness, and certain medications can also affect timing. The reproductive system responds to signals from many parts of the body, so disruptions in daily routines or health can influence how regularly cycles occur. Ovulation is central to the cycle, but it does not always happen every month. Sometimes the body may go through the motions of building and shedding the uterine lining without releasing an egg. This is known as an anovulatory cycle. It can occur for many reasons, including stress, hormonal shifts, or natural stages of life. When ovulation does not take place, the timing of the period may be unpredictable and the flow may be lighter or heavier than usual. Overall, the menstrual cycle is a coordinated system that depends on communication between the brain, ovaries, and uterus. Hormones act as signals that rise and fall throughout the month, guiding each step from the development of an egg to the building and shedding of the uterine lining. When the system functions smoothly, it works like a rhythmic pattern that repeats again and again. When the pattern changes, it is often the body's way of responding to the environment or internal conditions. Understanding these steps can help the process feel more predictable and less confusing, and it can make it easier to recognize what is typical for one's own body.